Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, anybody with even a limited knowledge of what's going on in the world and the geography of it knows that Russia is the largest country in the world, with its landmass greater than the USA and Canada combined. I mean, it stretches from the Baltic Sea to the Pacific Ocean, has 11 different time zones, and the distance between Moscow and Vladivostok, for example, is 5,603 miles. Now, to put that into perspective, the distance between London and Los Angeles, including the Atlantic Ocean, is only 4, 000, sorry, 5,400 miles. Now, when the EU and the US introduced their shock and awe sanctions, they intended to use them as weapons to destroy the Russian economy and bring the country to its knees. Now, one of the measures they introduced was a ban on all Russian flights into EU airspace. Now, the EU Institute, a US Institute, a similar ban. They stopped all Russian flights into Europe and all air passenger traffic to from Russia to Europe was stopped. Now, after this ban was introduced, Russia decided to close its skies to all airlines from countries that it deemed unfriendly, which is the US, EU, G7 and the assorted vassal states. So now, currently, the airlines of the EU and US are suffering losses due to the closure of the skies of Russia over them. However, one person's loss is another person's gain, so airlines from the BRICS and SEO members, plus others who didn't follow the sanctions, have taken advantage of this serious miscalculation by the US and EU politicians. As usual, politicians who thought up the sanctions didn't actually think them through and understand, again, the law of unintended consequences. Now, now which countries and airlines are we talking about here? I mean, let's look at the effect and the effects. I mean, uh, according to Bloomberg, flights for Asia for carriers from the US, UK and EU have become significantly more expensive since Russia closed its airspace. According to Bloomberg, planes of Air France, KLM, British Airways, Lufthansa and other airlines when flying to Japan have to bypass Russian territory by going through the airspace of Kazakhstan and Mongolia, which increases the flight time by three to five hours. Now, the route from Paris to Tokyo is now around 14 hours. I mean, the British carrier Virgin Atlantic, for example, was forced to suspend flights to Hong Kong because its prices uh, on the flight were uncompetitive. The Finnish carrier Finnair has experienced serious difficulties uh, in its flights to Japan, China and Korea. I mean, the flight time for them uh, to Tokyo has increased from 9.5 to 14 hours, depending on the season and the weather. I mean, this has increased fuel consumption. It's made this price unprofitable for most of the rivals that are not affected by the flight ban. Now, at the same time, flying over Russia, according to Finia, decreases the cost of flights by around 25 to 40%. Now, another pro problem is that the longer flights force the European uh, and American companies to have to replace their planes, increase crew costs and figure out how they can fly longer with less stress in the new environment. Now, India's uh, Air India has gained an advantage over its Western counterparts. I mean, its flight times to the US and Canada are about an hour and a half faster than those of Air Canada and United Airlines, and much cheaper. I mean, on comparable routes, uh, Air India used about 7.5 tonnes of fuel less than its Western rivals, and that saves around $8,500 per flight. Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific also uses Russian aerospace. It's a non-stop route from Hong Kong to uh, New York. Also, major Chinese and airline, uh, Asian airlines are operating in Russian airspace. They've really seized the commercial advantage eh, offered by shutting out of their Western rivals. I mean, the Middle Eastern airlines, who are state-owned, have decided against imposing sanctions, and they continue to use Russian skies. I mean, this gives Emirates, Qatar and uh, Etihad Airways they were the three dominant players in the region, a decisive advantage over their counterparts in Europe and the US. And of course, the ban on flights over Russia was a serious blow to I mean, It caused the increased price of aviation fuel, and in the last 18 months, a lot of the significant shift has been to uh, Asian carriers on the, the routes connecting Europe and Asia. I mean, more and more passengers are flying with airline, uh, Asian airlines, simply because they're cheaper. Uh, they're 
options uh, are cheaper and shorter uh, flight times. And the Western Airlines uh, are trying to minimize the uh, effects of this by using something like a code sharing mechanism when they're like part of the Star Alliance and they operate a flight together with a number of airlines. I mean, the flight is actually physically operated by an Asian airline, but part of the tickets are sold by a European company. But that's not really working out for them. So the major beneficiaries of the embargo on Russian flights into the European airspace are the airlines of countries that have not imposed sanctions on Russia. I mean, European politicians have again punished their countries and their uh, people by their own stupidity. I mean, traditionally, there's always been a large flow of passengers and cargo between Asia and Europe, and European airlines made a fair bit of money flying back and forth but using their airspace. Now, after the introducing the sanctions, um, some companies actually had to stop flying altogether simply because uh, it was unviable economically because of the increased travel time uh, and distance. I mean, those who didn't fall for the EU, uh, US, let's punish Russia sanctions this year, have gained the serious competitive advantage. They're now calmly flying back and forward, earning money uh, from Europe to Asia. And no matter how the Europeans try and circumvent these sanctions using uh, the code sharing with Asian countries, these airlines are not going to give up the opportunity to make good money out of the stupidity of the decisions of Western politicians. I mean, there's only one way out of the current situation that suits both Russia uh, and Europe, and that's the lifting of sanctions. I mean, only then will it be possible to have a normal cooperation on mutually beneficial terms. I mean, there's no particular advantage for Russia or Europe in having a closed sky. Yeah. So let's hope they come to their senses soon. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can make a small donation by clicking on the thanks button. This will help me fund the website seobricksinsight.com uh, and this channel and allow it to develop. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.